So for transvaginal ultrasound, the reason we do this is the probe is higher frequency, it's closer to the anatomy where we can see ovaries and adnexts and things in a lot more detail. Patients should be in the dorsal lithotomy position, just like the pelvic exam. Ideally, they have an empty bladder. In real patients that aren't plastic, we use a cover and we have a sterilization or a high level disinfection procedure that we go through. For sagittal views, our probe is oriented like this. So indicator is not real visible, but it's on top and it looks almost like a pistol with a trigger. Trigger should be down and this will give us sagittal views. For our coronal views, we rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees, indicator is to the patient's right. I usually start with in the sagittal orientation and the probe is placed in the vaginal vault and our eyes need to go on the screen as soon as we start to advance the probe. And in most patients with an antiverted uterus that's antiflexed, we'll see the uterine fundus at the top of the screen. And we'll remember that the abdomen is to the left of the screen and the patient's back is to the right of the screen. So this is the floor back here, posterior cul-de-sac. and when we rock the probe towards the ceiling, we see the bladder and the anterior structures. So these are anterior structures up here. When we point the probe down towards the floor, then we see posterior structures. We want to line up so that we see the uterine fundus and the endometrial stripe. And then to examine those structures, we fan from side to side till those structures disappear. And then frequently to see the posterior cul-de-sac, we need to point towards the floor and fan from side to side again. We always come back to the midpoint. And then from there, we'll go to coronal views. So indicators now towards the patient's right. And what we see is patient's right on this side of the screen, a patient's left on this side. And now our examination is fanning from ceiling to floor. So as we point the probe towards the ceiling, we see the bladder up here. And as we fan down through the uterus and point the probe to the floor, we see the posterior cul-de-sac and this is the simulated free fluid in the cul-de-sac. To identify the adnexa and the ovaries, we come to the midline, we fan over to one side, we need to apply some pressure into the lateral fornix and fan from ceiling to floor to examine the ovary and the adnexa completely until it disappears in each orientation. So it needs to disappear towards the ceiling and disappear towards the floor. And if we needed to apply color or anything, we could do that. Then we'll back out a little bit, slide to the lateral fornix on the other side, apply some pressure again, and fan all the way through from ceiling to floor until the ovary disappears in each plane. And again, if we needed to stop and apply color or do Doppler measurements, we could do that. And that's pretty much the exam.